I am going to be plainly honest um, with why I'm making this specific video. There's really nothing happening, and I wouldn't normally cover sporting stuff on this channel. Um, it's not really a topic that I cover too greatly anywhere, uh, but I think that this kind of fits with my general direction as a channel. It's the kind of stuff that I do talk about, so roll the intro and we'll get into it. Greetings, lovely people, and as I'm sure many of you are already very aware, the Olympics are on. It's still Olympics 2020, we're in 2021, it's a mess, but rather than covering any of the controversies that I've hit, or any of the like, major controversies, should I say, because there is a little bit of controversy to this story, I thought I'd cover something that I think is kind of nice. So, this year with the Olympics, Laurel Hubbard has become the first openly transgender athlete. And that is amazing, honestly. She represents New Zealand in weightlifting, and I just think it's really cool. It's because of a change that happened in 2015 to the Olympic rules, which basically allowed that as long as trans people of any gender are able to meet certain requirements, they're able to compete in their chosen gender group. So, in Laurel's case, she was able to pass the you know steps that were in place and was able to compete as a woman, which is a huge step forward for trans sports. And I'm not someone who is too fussed either way on the subject. It's not something that I have a strong opinion on. I can completely see both sides of it. I do think that people should be able to you know compete or perform or whatever else as their gender identity, but I also do understand that there are some innate disadvantages or advantages that certain gender binaries do possess. I don't necessarily agree with either point of view, I'm kind of neutral on it all, but I still think it's a really good thing that it's actually happening. We're actually getting trans athletes in, you know, some of the biggest events of the world, the Olympics. So it's one of those things where a lot of people have had some controversy around it. A lot of people think that the rules need to be changed, which I believe the IOC will be reviewing these rules to make sure that it actually fits better. A lot of people on both sides have had issues with the entire situation. A lot of pro-trans groups are very against the idea that it's based on testosterone levels, but at the same time, just during this Olympics, there have actually been two cis women, so non-trans people, people that were born as a woman, who were actually not allowed to compete due to their higher than normal testosterone level, which was completely natural, but it did mean that they weren't allowed, because of these rules, to compete. And that is a major issue of, sure, these rules are good for allowing certain trans people to compete, but when they're actually preventing cis people, it kind of brings up a lot of questions about what these rules are actually doing. Because in women, testosterone levels of certain amounts are perfectly normal, and similarly, you can have a really low testosterone level and still be an athletic man. It doesn't really mean all too much, and in a lot of ways, it is a bit of a nonsensical argument. At the same time, on the opposite side, of course, many people are saying that trans people shouldn't be able to compete as their chosen gender, it should be what they were assigned at birth, which, in my opinion, is completely wrong. I, But at the same time, I do completely understand where they're coming from in a roundabout sense. They think that it's going to put cis people at a disadvantage or at too much of an advantage. And I can completely, you know, respect that that is an opinion to be held. But at the same time, with how varied athletes can be, regardless of whether they're cis or trans, surely it doesn't really make too much of a difference if there's also trans people competing. Especially when, historically, we have seen very few instances, beyond a few extreme examples, where trans athletes have hugely outperformed cis athletes. 
It just doesn't really happen, especially when, according to a number of different tests and a number of different experiments and stuff like that, we've actually found that the disadvantage you actually get from transitioning kind of counteracts any advantage that it may have had initially. And that's the key point. By transitioning, the body does change in a way which will bring you much closer to your actual identity. And that's the key point. Just because a man with a high testosterone level transitioned doesn't mean that she will be a woman with a high testosterone level. She's more likely to have a pretty average testosterone level that is comparable to most women. And sure, that's not a rule, that's not a guarantee, but it is something that's worth noting. Now, so that I don't go off on things that I'm not all too confident on, I am going to leave it there. This was a topic that I really wanted to discuss, even though, as I say, it's not really something that I'm all too knowledgeable about. I just thought it was interesting and just a nice bit of history to come out of this Olympic Games in a year that's been an absolute mess for all considered. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. So if you liked it, make sure to like it. Subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos like this almost every week. I try at least. And if you ring that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload. But otherwise, that's it from me. And uh, yeah. Bye.